Hello and welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, Lisa and Scrappy? Scrappy do. Aw, Scrappy do. Um, for description purposes, I am a middle-aged Caucasian woman with shorter length brown hair sitting in front of a very full bookshelf. And welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Laura. <gasps> and so Scrappy. That's a, this is the best thing ever to have your emotional sport dog with you. Yes. Yeah. He's learning. <laughs> <laughs> That's their job. Just like it's our job, right? He's five months and um, he's learning not to eat paper. You know, we all have things we need to learn. <laughs> That's also really good. Oh, hey, um, I'm excited to work with you again because this is this is going to be the third year you've been part of Opulent Mobility. How did you find out about it in the first place? Well, I was very interested in in what um, Ikoi? Ikoi, I think. Um, yeah. It is I-K-O-U-I-I, -I, and it's a gallery and artist group that works with disabled artists. I was very interested in what they were doing and um, what Opulent Mobility was doing as well. Neat. And um, got to be in that show and met you and heard more about it. And I want to be grandfathered into Opulent Mobility. <laughs> so important. Thank you so much. No, I'm actually really glad. Um, this was, uh, Ikui puts out an open call pretty yeah. regularly. And so we were both part of one of the same shows, yeah. which is an awesome way to meet. Do you want to describe your artwork? I was going to show um, show some of the pieces. And yeah. yeah. The, the work that I'm doing now is a series based on disability. And um, what I am going through personally, my work has always been autobiographical. And this series really talks about the dysfunction of connections. Um, mm -hmm. And so it it's really um, about the fragility of those systems and I, I'm using um I'm using mi mixed media uh to do that I see that because the this is the piece that you had from last year's show um the attacks or the pieces the ataxians and that's a variety of different mediums you're using copper wire and paper clay and what else was in this um this was steel wire and fiber class those uh materials sort of melted and morphed together are are not only fragile uh which was really important for this work but um also manipulative where I'm a ceramic artist. Uh, that's my background. Um, that's what I have my master's in and uh, was working with that predominantly until uh, I was diagnosed with this disability. And um, I love that I can manipulate these materials even after they're fired. Um, mm. Ceramic artist is, you know, once it's once it's fired and reached that that point of becoming a ceramic material, then um, you're kind of you're kind of done. Mm. With and so, so what? I you know I like the idea of being permanent, but still showing the fragility of uh, the material and and the work, the concepts. It absolutely shows that. I think that um, some of some of the other um, recent work that you've done, which is much more paper based, 
yeah. is absolutely also showing that fragility in a very real way. What made you getting uh, get into working with paper? You know, um, it's kind of a funny story. I was working on um, a painting of a sculpture and ah. I hated uh, the result. Oh no. <laughs> so I ripped it. I I just tore that section out and I said, oh, wait a minute. Um, and I I haven't looked back since then. Interesting. <laughs> Several yeah. years ago. I was very interested in the way the paper tore, the archival paper is is um really uh compacted together and so when you rip it you you see the layers of the the pulp and the threads which is really beautiful in itself mm -hmm. it's really neat so what does that how does it speak to you when you're putting it together you know i've saved a lot of money uh, that I would have spent at a therapist by being an artist. <laughs> and, and I'm I'm literally considering how the connections work together and how they don't on mm, mm. um you know I I don't know if you can see this Laura but I'm working on one right now. Okay, I can see here. And, um, and it's really, really uh, kind of an intuitive process that I'm working with. And uh, I'm allowing the paper, the material and the connections to take over and to connect with what they want and what they don't, that's okay. And we just, it's very cathartic work. It just um, hmm. it comes together, even though it doesn't all work yeah. in a perfect system. But it's if it's coming together, and I think most artists will tell you after a while that you're letting things come to you. Yes. You know, look through the technique, through the working on it, letting things come to you. Yeah. Um, has that, how has that changed um, with your diagnosis? I mean, has that, is it make it easier? Does it make it different? What does it do? Well, I, Harder. Um, uh, you know, certainly this work is more feasible for me to do uh, with SCA5 um, because it's lighter. But with um, my hands are, are I, I've tried to work with other metal um, work right now and, and mm -hmm. um, that tends to uh, make my hands ache. And so the paper, is is better on my muscles mm -hmm. and my doctors have said that um just this hand-eye coordination is helping me i should be worse than what i am right now mm -hmm. um, so you know just the act of doing it for me is um is, is very therapeutic um no literally and and mentally yes it sounds like yes wow i guess that is one of those things if you keep on uh strengthening that the hand-eye coordination but also the mental process that yes. you're strengthening working yeah. those muscles as well and and with ska five if you lose it you will if you if you don't use it you will lose it and you will never regain it so it's um one of those things for me that i i feel like i i i can't i have an internal drive as an mm -hmm. artist 
but I cannot stop. Uh, if I stop, I w won't be able to start again. And mm. I know why Matisse painted with his toes. You know, he just couldn't stop. So Yeah. And I think that some it can find a way. Yeah. It can find a way through whatever is going on with you to um to make things happen. Um as long as you have that option. Yeah. And that's amazing. I'm glad that you have that and I'm glad you have great care. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I have I have lots of different doctors and um see every ologist there is. <laughs> yeah and i i don't have just one neurologist i have four neurologists and they all do something different uh, <laughs> all a hematologist um too so i i just every ologist i'm know? glad you have a good team because that yeah. sounds like a that sounds yeah. like a pit stop team. <laughs> and in between the doctors in physical therapy uh, for walking and creating artwork, I uh, I hope to continue walking um, and um, working as long as possible. What other things are you working on right now? Because I know you have shows in the work all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I write a lot of grants. Um, so that just that grant writing process for me, it really makes me, forces me to think. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, use that, um, that part of the brain that, that, uh, I don't oftentimes like to <laughs> like to use, but if it's making you, that's yeah. a great way to do it. Yeah. Have you so, do you have some grants coming through lately? I do, I do. Congratulations! Thank you. Have but, have a lot of great um great funding sources right now. Nice. Um, I I've got. Uh, shows lined up through next year, I think through the middle of next year, a couple uh, pretty large shows coming up. I'm still waiting to hear the date, but but that that keeps me working. It you know, I, I'm in the studio probably 50 to 60 hours a week. And, um, and I'm also teaching full time still. So it's, it's a balancing act to get everything in. And yeah. um, so, so this work is great because I can take it with me. I have it in the Got it. Right and you can do it in sections. I do it in sections. I am working everywhere. Um, a lot of times when I'm getting, I just had three iron infusions the last oh. three weeks, and they, they can't give you an iron infusion because at one time because of the iron toxicity to your body, mm -hmm. with um with everything that's going on with me, um, my, it's like a maybe that doesn't matter so much. My platelets and iron crashed and mm. so I had to set for two hours when I get this done and so I'm working on sculpture and you know the whole time and so it's become part mm. of my life and, yeah and that's the only way that I can make that happen yeah it's one of the things I've been talking about with a lot of the different interviews is how do you make the art around what the physical conditions are that you have? You know, what what are the needs? Because the art has needs too. <laughs> but uh, finding the one that works best with your body and with the way you are designed, the, the way that you think, that makes that all the better. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that some of what you're talking about, um, and 
uh, in other times about the paper and how it's about connections and neural nets. Yes. So is that like, um, it's almost like knitting together of paper, sort of? It's really, this work is about the process for me. And um, it's knitting, weaving, and thatching the pieces together. Um, I did a, a lot with wire, too, on mm -hmm. this work that you were showing before. Yeah. And, um, and the copper wire was working well, but it, it was so tedious. It really, really, um, it's much easier with paper for me. Um, and, and so, um, the, the, the paper's not hurting my hands as much is still way better. Yeah. That is great. And it's also, it's, it seems like it's telling the story you need it to tell. Yes. Yeah. And so I just did a workshop um, at the Springfield Museum. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And um, I had a group of people come in and, sorry, my dog. <laughs> Your dog is very excited. It's all good. <laughs> Um, I had people come in and I presented them with questions and strips of paper to answer, um, how, how did they connect? Oh, nice. Uh, and, uh, what does this disability mean to them? And it posts a few different questions, had the right responses. And then I took the paper home and I wove it into a sculpture. Nice. And so I I see that is the way that I'm gonna a new direction. That yeah. I'm, what a I, neat way to do it. Yeah. I want to incorporate the public more into my work and cool. um become a voice. Uh, yeah. Of, yeah. For this rare disease I have. That seems like what a great way to do it, uh, not only just to share that experience, but to have other people share in the experience of creation. Right, right. Neat. Hmm. That sounds like a really fun way. And also maybe not so hard on your hands as well. Right, right. And possibly good for a few grants. Yes. So, all right, then. An excellent choice. Thank you so much for doing this. Hello. <laughs> and I'm so glad that Scrappy Doo can join us. Yes, he is happy. Yeah, that's he's good. good Just don't eat all the paper weaving. That no. will be a terrible day. No. <laughs> I had a curator just pick up work in his preparator uh, about an hour ago. Scrappy was still trying to fight the sculpture on the way and the way out. And I'm like, Scrap, you can't do that. Could you, could you not do that? Um, it needs to look like the picture before it goes out the door. <laughs> I was literally biting on the way out. Oh. <laughs> it's, just, it's just how you, you'll learn. I yeah. guess we'll all learn. I don't know. Maybe there's a way to make the paper less tasty. Yeah, he's five months in. He has really adapted well to the we, studio, but he just can't break that. Yeah. Well, I mean, th th that's, I'm not really sure what that is in dog. Is that toddler or is that preteen? Right. Right. I, that might be preteen. It's many, I don't know. It's hard for some of us to break our habits now. So yeah. I yeah. figure it. At five months, I'm going to give you some grace. Well, he better break it. <laughs> Try not to eat my art. Yes. 